Okay, let's do some examples of analyzing uh, some kind of game uh, using a game theory analysis and a payoff matrix, right? So, got an example here. Bob and Liz must decide whether to produce their goods or price their goods high or low. This is known as again as the pricing game. So we've got uh, Bob's profit here on the left, and then Liz is uh, Liz is on the right. Okay, so that's the way to read. Uh, the one with the commas. So we want to know: Does he have a dom does Bob have a dominant strategy? Does Liz have a dominant strategy? Is there a dominant strategy equilibrium? Is there a Nash equilibrium? So let's let's find out. Let me use the pen here. All right. So let's say Liz price is high. Okay. So Bob's two choices are to price high or price low, and uh, he could make uh, four hundred dollars or six hundred dollars. He's going to choose six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars is more. So Liz is going to produce or price high. He's going to produce price low rather. Sorry. Uh, then if Liz goes low, he is also going to go low. So for Bob, he does have a dominant strategy. That's to price low. Okay. Does Liz have a dominant strategy? Well, let's find out. Let's say Bob prices high. And now we're looking at the second option here. So it's either 300 or 500 and uh, 500 is better. Okay. So for Liz, she's going to go high when Bob goes high. Okay. Now, if Bob goes low, she can either go low or she can go high, and 200 is more than 150, so she is going to go low. So, does Liz have a dominant strategy? She does not have a dominant strategy. So, it is possible that you can end up in a situation where it's non um, non dominant strategy situation. So, Liz here, she's going to price high if Bob prices high, but she's also going to price low if Bob prices low. So. She just doesn't have a dominant strategy. She's going to do a different thing depending on what Bob does. This is where information gets really important, right? Liz would really like to know what Bob's going to do, right? She'd really like to um, know know what what's going on here. And if if she, if they could collude, they'd both be up here. But you know, remember, collusion's illegal. Is there a dominant strategy equilibrium? Well, no, because there's not a dominant strategy for Liz. But there is a Nash equilibrium, and the Nash equilibrium is that Liz will price low, Bob will price low. Uh, and if you look at this, look at some of the other payouts, this is actually the worst one, okay? But because they're competitive, that's where they're going to end up, okay? Um, you can think about big OPEC producer payouts, right? So we're back to, to what OPEC's up to. Um, for the big producer, they don't, they don't want to cheat on the cartel because they want that higher price. And if they cheat on the cartel, then the price is going to go um, uh, the, the price is going to go way down because they're one of the big producers, right? OPEC will fall apart pretty quick. But a small OPEC producer, um, let's uh, let's see what the small OPEC producer is going to do. Okay, so draw. Oh, I thought I had that. Thought I had that straight there. I guess I didn't. Okay, well we'll just give ourselves a payout here. Okay. So we've got a uh, small country. Okay, so this is small country in OPEC. It's where there are some, right? So they can cheat on the cartel or they can not cheat. And then the big country can cheat or they can not cheat okay for some context you can think um, big country gonna be Saudi Arabia Iran uh, those countries right so well, I did should have done this in different colors oops well we'll we'll just say that these guys are in purple here okay so the, the big country if they cheat um, OPEC you know is gonna fall apart right OPEC's gonna lose credibility the the price of oil in the world market's gonna go way down um, so, you know, that's probably the end of OPEC once the big countries start to cheat on each other, like Saudi Arabia. Uh, if they don't cheat, though, um, they can make higher profit. Oops, and I should have done that in purple. Oops. Let me just erase it here. It's right over that. Um, they can make higher profits. Okay, and because they're a big producer, it doesn't really matter what the little guys do. Um, and so, you know, with that higher, slightly higher price, they're going to make more profit either way. So this is going to be their dominant strategy, regardless of what the small country does. So let's think about the small country. Um, for the small country, if they cheat, if, and oh, big country cheats, well, 
you know, it's the end of OPEC, so it doesn't really matter. And if they don't cheat and the big country cheats, you know, they're going to have less profit, but again, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so really what we're faced with is cheat or don't cheat, knowing that the big country is going to make big profits or, or big profits, right? So if they don't cheat, you know, they make slightly bigger profit. But if they cheat, they're going to make a much bigger profit, right? And, and economists and, and managers actually kind of figure out what these, what these profits are, the functions behind it and all this, right? So this is better than this. And for the, uh, the the large OPEC country, um, you know they're they're um, they're not likely to uh, uh, cheat either way, right? So we'll often end up with this situation where big country doesn't cheat, small country cheats because of the the, the profits that can be had there. Okay, so we'll do a couple more examples here. That's how to write your own. Um, here is the I think what's called the advertising game. Um, advertising is expensive. Uh, let's see if it benefits either firm, right? So Coca-Cola is the second set of numbers. Pepsi is the first set of numbers. So let's say that Coke advertises. What should Pepsi do? So Pepsi can advertise and get five uh, million in profit, or they can lose two million in profit. So Pepsi can advertise. Okay. If Coke doesn't advertise, Pepsi can advertise and make thirteen million, or don't advertise and make eight. Thirteen is bigger than eight. So Pepsi's dominant strategy here. It's going to be to advertise. What about Coke? Okay, so Coke, if Pepsi advertises, Coke can make make five million dollars in additional profit or lose two. They're going to advertise, and uh, Pepsi here, if they don't advertise, Coke should advertise because thirteen is bigger than eight. Okay, so this is also their dominant strategy. This is the Nash. This is also the the dominant strategy. Equilibrium. Okay, so you're going to end up with this. And this, of course, is another version of the prisoner's dilemma because this outcome is worse than this outcome, right? But both firms have a, a dominant strategy to advertise. Okay, here's another uh, advertising game here, a little bit different numbers. So let's see what's going on. So firm A is in the green boxes and firm um, B is in the purple boxes. So um, if firm B advertises, what's better for firm A? Advertise. If firm B doesn't advertise, it's better for firm A to advertise. Firm A has a dominant strategy. I, I tried to cover that up there and yeah, it showed up anyway. Um, if firm A advertises, what's better for firm B? It's to advertise because if they don't advertise, then they're, they're indifferent. But if they advertise, they're going to make a little bit more. And then uh, if firm A doesn't advertise, what's better? And that's to advertise. Okay, So even though the payouts are different, uh, we're still going to end up uh, here, this is our Nash. Okay, so for both firms to to advertise, this is also the dominant strategy. Okay, uh, then let's do this one. Michael and Amy are the only two producers of widgets in the world. They're given following choices: raise or lower their prices. So let's see what should happen here. So Amy is you know listed right here, and then Michael is right there. So let's say Amy raises her prices. What's better for Michael to raise his price and make five hundred, or to lower his price and make six hundred? It's to lower his price. If Amy lowers her prices, what's better for Michael to raise his price or lower his price? It's better to raise his price. Okay, so actually Michael does not have a dominant strategy. He's going to do two different things depending on what Amy does. Okay, uh, now Amy, uh, if Michael raises his price, Amy is better off to lower her price. Okay, and if Michael lowers his price, uh, it's better off for Amy to lower her price. Two. Okay, so uh, Amy does have a dominant strategy. It's to to lower her price, but the Nash is right here. Okay, so this is the the Nash equilibrium. Okay, in this game, uh, so it doesn't always nicely work out uh, all the way up there. Okay, there's some stuff you can kind of look over. Um, this last example, I believe, is uh, negative campaign ads. So let's say that uh, Republican and Democrat are going to uh, collude and they're going to make an agreement. I'm not going to uh, do an attack ad at all. Okay. Uh, if the Republican runs an attack ad on the Democrat and the Democrat doesn't, 3,000 fewer people will vote for the Democrat, 1,000 more of these people will vote for the Republican, and the rest will abstain. Okay. Uh, the Democrat and vice versa. Okay. If the Democrat, w will they stick to the agreement? Okay. 
So here's the, the payouts here. So the Republican is in red and the Democrat's in blue. So if the Republican decides not to run an attack ad, what's better for the Democrat? To not gain anything or not lose anything or to gain 1,000. And, oops, it is to gain. Okay. If the Republican runs an attack ad, the Democrat doesn't run an attack ad, they're going to lose 3,000 votes. Or they can lose 2,000 votes and losing 2,000 votes is slightly better. So the Democrat has a uh, dominant strategy here to run an attack ad. The Republican, uh, let's look at their choices. If, if the Democrat doesn't run an attack ad and colludes on the deal, then uh, they can either not gain anything or lose anything, or they can gain 1,000 votes, and they're going to gain 1,000 votes. Okay. Next, a uh, Democrat can... Uh, run if the Democrat does run an attack ad, what's better for the Republican uh, to lose 3,000 votes or lose 2,000 votes? And it's to lose 2,000 votes. So this, unfortunately, is our Nash equilibrium. And, and uh, in many elections all across the country, uh, they end up with uh, this kind of uh, um, uh, situation. This is a prisoner's dilemma again. Be better for society if uh, they stayed up here. Be better actually for the candidates too, because those those ads are expensive. Okay, so um, the, the we often end up with situations here. So it's up to policymakers to try to think through how to get away from these uh, situations. Okay. Let me see here. So last couple examples here. I just want you to do. Um, you can do that one on your own. Um, you know, game of chicken, does it have a dominant strategy? Um, and in your paper, you're going to need to think through a, a situation just like this um, where you're going to you're going to talk about, you know, situation. It could be with you and your employees. It could be you and your boss. It could be you and the shareholders. Um, it's a pretty good CEO game. There could be a pollution problem. So you don't have to draw the, the payout matrix if you don't want to, but... Um, but at least ex being able to explain this kind of uh, payout is, is definitely, you know, the quote payout ha, 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 of the uh, of the situations. So it's why we do this. Okay, so actually I got to here, right? So, um, so think about this, and you get, could be a prisoner prisoner's dilemma, might not be. Okay, so uh, there you go, and be for sure to email me if you have any questions.